Welcome to Drawn in 60 Seconds, where I give you a rapid run-through of a topic in history. Today I'm going to explain a little about how Gustav Stresemann, Chancellor and then Minister for Foreign Affairs, helped stabilize Weimar Germany in the years 1923 to 1929. Before we discuss Stresemann's actions, we need to understand some of the very serious problems facing Weimar Germany when he rose to prominence. After losing in World War I, Germany was practically bankrupt. Adding to this financial misery was the burden of reparations they were forced to pay by the Treaty of Versailles. Unable to make only their second payment to the Allies, France and Belgium invaded the industrial heartland of Germany, the Ruhr Valley, in an attempt to confiscate resources in lieu of the money they were due. This invasion triggered a series of events that ultimately led to hyperinflation, whereby the German currency lost its value and the price of goods skyrocketed. Mass unemployment ensued as workers were laid off or were forced to strike in the Ruhr as the government ordered they passively resist French and Belgian pressure to work. As economic turmoil gripped the country, extremist parties gained in popularity and some groups, such as the National Socialists or Nazis, tried to overthrow the government. Increased international isolation following World War I compounded Weimar Germany's problems, as few were willing to come to their aid. Clearly, Stresemann was going to have his work cut out in trying to solve these serious problems. One of his first actions was to call off the campaign of passive resistance in the Ruhr Valley that the workers had been following in order to frustrate the French and Belgians. In doing so, Stresemann was able to get Germany's biggest industrial area producing again. More than this, by promising the French and Belgians that Germany would restart her reparations payments, he was able to convince them to leave Germany. In order to get hyperinflation under control, Stresemann, along with Hjalmar Schacht and Hans Luther, replaced the useless German Papiermark with a new currency, the Rentenmark, which was backed by mortgaging land that was used by agriculture and business. The Rentenmark was later replaced by the Reichsmark in 1924. In 1924, Stresemann helped negotiate the Dawes Plan with American banker and former director of the Bureau of the Budget, Charles Dawes. This plan reduced the amount of reparations Germany had to pay until their economy could sustain a higher rate of payment. To help rebuild the German economy, Stresemann negotiated loans worth hundreds of millions of dollars from foreign businessmen. These loans were used to construct factories, purchase machinery and create housing, all of which provided much needed jobs to Germany's population. So that he might restore Germany's battered international reputation, Stresemann signed the Locarno Treaties in 1925, in which Germany promised to respect the post-war borders between Germany, France and Belgium. Partly in response to this, Germany was granted membership into the League of Nations in 1926. As a consequence, Germany's international image was rehabilitated and she could now sit at the diplomatic table with other world powers. Although ultimately not really worth the paper it was printed on, Stresemann also signed the kellogg briand Pact, in which 15 nations agreed to outlaw war and use only peaceful means to solve international problems. Like I said, though well-intentioned, the pact was virtually meaningless in any practical sense. One of Stresemann's final acts before he died was to sign the Young Plan in 1929. Much like the Dawes Plan, it reduced the amount of reparations that Germany had to pay and it also provided further loans to the value of $300 million. All of these actions helped bring a period of relative stability to the fledgling Weimar democracy, but Stresemann himself warned of the fragility of the situation when he said, the German economy is doing well only on the surface. Germany is, in fact, dancing on a volcano. If the short-term loans are called in by America, most of our economy will collapse. This is precisely what happened in 1929, when the Wall Street crash triggered a global economic depression.